Hello everyone, I'm Serafin, and today I am super proud to be the first person to run Axie Verge 2 at a major marathon. Let's get some hype. Today I'm gonna to be running the Major Glitches Any% Percent category, for which I am the current world record holder. And because this is an incredibly tight run, I actually have two wonderful people from the Axiom Verge community joining me to do commentary. I have one of the mods from the Axiom Verge Discord, Falcon Sfrico 2. Hey everybody, how's it going? Good to be here. And I have my Axiom Verge 1 randomizer rival, Thoriel the Lich. Hey everyone, how's it going? And if you two are ready and we're ready on time, we can go ahead and get this run started. Good to go when you are. All right, let's go in three, two, one, go. All right, everybody, welcome to Axiom Verge 2. Here we're playing as a character named Indra Chaudhari. She's a corporate billionaire who's come to Antarctica looking for her missing daughter. And that is the entirety of the lore that you're getting throughout this run. So since this is a true Metroidvania game, we're going to start off by going to the left here and picking up our first weapon for Indra here. You're going to see Seraphine actually do a bit of a save quit right here. This allows for some saving on unnecessary backtracking. We're actually going to use this mechanic a few times throughout the run here. A couple times right in the beginning, and then there's going to be one towards the end of the run that's extremely vital to the run. But we'll get a little bit more into detail on what's going to happen when we get there. So as we move through this research station, we have to turn on the power to be able to progress. And you'll notice that there's a suspicious lack of any people, as well as any real hazards. So it gives you a little bit of time to kind of get used to the mechanics and the movement of this game. Just a nice little bit before it throws you off the deep end. Yeah, so now that you see that Seraph has turned on the power, we're going to save quit again. We're just gonna put it right outside the substation door that we need to go through here. By turning the power on, we now can go through this door on the side. And you see this little garage door here. Now Seraphim's actually gonna have Indra crouch down to go through this door, and that allows us to go through the door just a tiny bit quicker. You know, in a world record run that's just less than 11 minutes, we wanna to try to save every frame possible. So going through the garage door here now, that's gonna transport us into this new area that's definitely possibly still Antarctica. Question? Definite, definite maybe. So as we go along, you'll see some more signs of some human activity along, like this do not enter sign that we're just gonna conveniently ignore. And along with that, speaking of things that we're gonna be ignoring here, these tremors, just don't worry about it. Not a problem. No, that, that's not gonna be an issue, but you know, I am getting a little hungry, Thor. What do you think, should we get a snack along the way? Man, I love some donuts. All right. Hmm, that one's got blue frosting. And speaking of throwing you off the deep end, that wasn't entirely metaphorical. Uh, going into this room, we want to go exactly eight splashes to the left before turning around to the right and hugging this wall. And once Indra goes vertical, we're going to open up the item menu, and that allows you to actually drown just a little bit faster. Yeah, so this is actually a forced death animation in here, and by doing the setup that Seraphim's done here, it actually saves about 30 seconds over doing it casually and letting this entire room fill up with water, so huge time save for us. So, coming up here, we're going to be doing the most important trick of the run, and this is called the Moonwalk, and it's necessary for validating the run. By holding right on the thumbstick, and once Indra starts standing up, holding left on the D-pad, You'll walk left while facing right. Woohoo. Honk, honk. So, legitimately now, coming up is the most important trick of this run. It's called the recoil slide, and by using this pickaxe and slashing downwards at an angle, you can actually push yourself off screen by using the uh, recoil from it, you push yourself through a loading zone. However, doing this needs an audio cue, so Falcon and I are gonna have to be quiet for a minute. And you can see the recoil slide right there done by Seraphim. Gets us past that laser grid. That saves us from having to go and pick up another item to get us into this area. And by going this way, we can get over here and get our first earn of the run. This is Sheshkala, and this allows us to do ledge grabs. Yeah, so just a simple little mechanic. However, now there's about a minute and a half of simple fun platforming, so if you've got any donations, now's the perfect time. 
Oh, definitely. Thanks, y'all. We have a $2,000 donation from the one and only Sabera Messia, who says, Hey, Seraphin, wishing you good luck on the run, even though the odds are already skewed in your favor. Careful on that last boss, though. You've got this. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sabera. Uh, we have time for one more? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a $50 donation from Zanuck, who says, just wanted to say good luck on the... Oh, it's over. <laughs> just zip right on through it. Congrats on the run, Seraphin. Back to y'all. Actually, Sky, there's time for one more if you'd like to. Oh, absolutely. We have a $25 donation from Bluey Lewis, who says, good luck on the run, Seraphin. AV community proud of how far you've come. Oh, thank you, Bluey and Sabira. Yeah, a couple Beautiful. big prominent members of our AV community there coming through and showing their support. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, like, huge shout out to all of the AVSR community because you guys are all just the most wonderful people. Before you guys ask, no, I'm not doing it. Do it. Oh, I was waiting for the question. Do it. Swag jump. <laughs> oh, I probably should have. <laughs> that hurt. Uh, that's bad. That's never not, happened before. Uh, yeah. oh, I was just, that's not quite a, that's never happened, but. <laughs> so coming up into this next room, we're going to be grabbing the second of the three urns throughout this run. And this one's called Mosh House. It allows you to glitch uh, certain enemies and platforms to be able to activate them and move them or with enemies like to uh, get them to be your ally. So by holding the L2 button, or R2, sorry, uh, you can actually see this purple circle around Indra, and that's gonna allow you to activate those platforms into moving. Yeah, so coming through this area right here, you're actually gonna see a really interesting mechanic about a lot of the enemies in this game. Um, you can see they kind of have these laser grids coming out of them. That's how they, they sense Indra and they tell where to fire their projectiles against her. But the enemies themselves don't actually have hitboxes for the most part. There are exceptions, obviously, but enemies in this game seem to be very optional. Uh, and it also, and being optional, a lot of the bosses in this game are optional as well. As a fact, we're only going to see one boss in the entire run, and that's right here. So everyone, take your chance and say hi to the Hunter Drone. Hi, Hunter Drone! And now you can all say goodbye to the Hunter Drone. Goodbye, Hunter Drone. So coming up here, we're grabbing the third uh, urn that we're getting throughout this run, and this one's called Damu, and Seraphim just nailed a wonderful trick there. That's called Burn Skip. So by pausing on the same frame that pickaxe comes in contact with the urn, you can save and quit. It still collects the ability of the urn without actually having to see the animation. So it's a nice seven second time save. Huh? Long. And right away here, we're going to be going up to the second of the two recoil slides throughout this run. This one will... It's about twice the length of the first one. However, there is a slight advantage being that there's an enemy in the room where we start off this recoil slide. So it'll kind of knock you off screen, speed things up. You can actually see all of Andrus' movement on the mini map. However, like this first uh, recoil slide requires audio cues, so it's gonna have to be quiet time again for us. through that section now we're going to be coming up to one of the bigger tricks in this game so just ignore that blue christmas tree it's definitely not lore related i'm going to send the drone out over the right here and that's going to be very important for what's coming up and yet again we're activating this glitch ability a little bit early so we can hit this switch just on the way down and save the drone at the save station however indra actually has to go over to the left here also activating this glitch ability early 
yet again to hit a switch so we can uh, do a little trick here. So we're gonna throw the drone out and save and quit while Andrew's in that wall. And what that does is the game now thinks that Andrew's position is still where that wall was. However, it's gonna be closed again. So once we recall this drone back to Indra, it's gonna kind of clip Indra out of bounds here. And yet again, you can see on the mini map, as Indra's moving over to the right, we can, uh, you'll see a little bit of vertical movement here where Seraphin has to jump a couple of times. And coming up is that final boss that Spirit was talking about is- Fingers crossed. Skew. Yeah, fingers crossed. This can go one of two ways. Either we go up into the final boss room or down into Soft Lock City, and we definitely don't want to go there. It's not a great spot for a vacation. So Ow. that's unfortunate. That means we've got an Alt F4 here. So the slight upside to this is, what that'll do is, as far as the game is concerned, Indra is still in that wall. So once we restart, we'll end up actually right back where we were. We can just retry that trick and go right after it again. We're not quite sure what the deal is with that skew as to whether or not it's like what actually causes it to go up or down. As far as we're aware right now, it seems to be frame dependent, but not certain on that. I almost think I've ruled out the frame dependency, actually. Um, the best thing I've been able to come up with is releasing jump and right at certain timings works, but it's still not 100% resistant, or works, but sometimes it does, just like it just did. All right, so we're in. All right, so we're in. So now you're gonna see that we are in the final boss room of the game. But the fun fact is, since we never met the final boss, there is no final boss, actually. So all Seraphim has to do now is run around and hit the four switches throughout the room, and then go down and detonate the bomb, and it will be GG's. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of it. <laughs> oh wait, we lied. Just, just, just kidding. This is, this is, after all, a Metroidvania game, and you cannot leave a detonated bomb. You have to escape, obviously. So now we're going to watch as Seraphim runs out while the countdown goes. However, on the upside during this escape sequence, we do have some of the best music throughout this game. It's actually a remix of a track from the first game, if uh, if you're familiar with that at all. However, yeah, it's uh, for a game that's all developed by one person. This is some really good uh, music going on here. Uh, time is coming up on the fade to black. Yep, and so one fun fact about the last room here is that the game, when we're escaping, doesn't care whether we have Indra escape or the drone. Time. So as you see, Seraphim throws the drone right there to escape, and Indra kind of gets locked in with the bomb, unfortunately. <laughs> bye bye, 10, Indra. 56, 12. Nice. Well done, my friend. Well done. Uh, GG. This is the part where I'd like to make a note that there are only two people in the world, myself being one of them, obviously, who have been able to do a sub-11 run on this game. So getting a sub-11 at a marathon and only having to reset once, like, I will 100% I will take that at a marathon. Oh, that was exciting. Uh, we got a minute for me to do a couple of quick shout outs. Excellent. I just want to give a quick shout out again to the entire ABSR community. Like, uh, they do so much work in finding all the weird tricks and glitches and things that make this run work. And in particular, I'm going to give a huge shout out to Maragon, who found the last skew that gets us into that final boss room. Prior to that being found, this run was a bit over an hour long, so that one trick cut like 50 minutes off of this run. I also want to give a big shout out to Tom Happ, who is the sole developer of this game. It's insane to even think that one person did everything in this game, from the art to the music to the gameplay. It, it's just, it's phenomenal, Tom. You did a wonderful job with it. Don't let this run discourage you guys from playing this game, because we barely even scratch the surface of what this game has to offer. And lastly, I want to give a big shout out to all the GDQ staff for all the hard work that you do year after year putting this event on and for letting me be here to showcase this run. It has literally been a dream come true to be here amongst some of the best speedrunners in the world and to help raise money for such a great cause and I'm just so thankful for it. And I could go on all night thanking people, but there's a whole lot more marathon to get to. So check me out over on Twitch TV forward slash backseat gaming crew and enjoy the rest of AGDQ, everyone. Woo!
welcome back to AGDQ 2022 online. Let's hear it one more time for Seraphin. And folks, remember that runner information is there. Please be sure to give all of the wonderful runners and commentators a follow here at this AGDQ so far. You all are awesome. But again, thanks to Seraphin and the AV2 crew. Thank you all so much. We have $25 from Sergeant Soki, who says, this is the second GDQ I've managed to catch live, and I'm super hyped to watch a week's worth of awesome speedruns. Thanks to everyone for making the event happen. Also, Joel Tian for best devolution. Stanky Kong Day, $20, and says, thank you for organizing this. Every year gets more amazing. Be careful with the puns, folks. The pun is sure will get you. And one more here. We have a couple more AV love here before huh? we leave our wonderful AV yeah. segment here. We have $10 from G Virus. It says, hey, there if G Virus here. Just wanted to say how proud I am of seeing you walk in my yeah, I got the Spring Perfect gift, but I didn't get the GDQ this for the first time, just so. like I did for the first one. Just make sure you do better than I did on my first appearance and you'll be just fine. The AVSR community is one of the greatest in all of gaming, and I'm super proud to be a part of it and love each and every single one of you. You're doing all of us proud, so keep it up. Uh, Chris A. Grimm donates $50 saying, wanted to wish Seraphim and all the GDQ runners the best of luck today. Oh, and uh, Umbreon, sorry. A lot of strong Eevee opinions here, y'all. All right, and with that being said, y'all, speaking of taking a break from these puns, we are going to take a quick break. We will be right back. Awesome games done quick 2022. And now folks, for real, I mean actually for real this time, going to send you on over to some of my favorite prize folks. Shout and send, take it away y'all. Hey Shout, you know what my favorite okay. part about being in a time loop is? <laughs> What's that? I get to talk about the gel peon again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 Online. My name is Sent, I'm joined by the always amazing Mr. Game and Shout. Thank you, sir. And we have prizes. Boy, do we have prizes. Prizes like this so many prizes. shiny Jolteon from Pincushion Cat Plushies. $10 minimum donation from now until the end of Death Store. Pretty much all the prizes we're going to be talking about are from now until the end of Death Store. Make sure to get those donations in. This thing is absolutely adorable. And look, I need to address something with Twitch chat. 
I know my statement earlier might have sparked, you know, a little bit of friendly debate amongst the community. Was that a Jolteon pun? Yeah, but, but again, I, I just, you know, I, yeah, it was, it was. You got me. Okay. I, I, I was just talking about Gen 1. Gen 1, Jolteon is objectively the best. Now, when it comes to cuteness, I think we can all agree that the tier list is very clearly uh, Glaceon, Sylveon, Umbreon, Flareon, Jolteon, Don't Carry On, that's it, we're done. However, do care about this Jolteon because this absolutely adorable. Thank you so much to Pincushion Cat Plushies. And don't remember, $10 minimum donation from now until the end of Death Store. You can win it. Boop. Did just going straight naming way with those, with those evolutions there. Very yep. impressive. All right. Dropping them. Some other things that we have here for uh, $5. I believe. No, 15. 15 for the set. 15 for the set. My notes just went away. <laughs> it's, it's all good. <laughs> no. 15 for the set from a Capcom and Fan Gamer. We have this beautiful set of Mega Man pins. And these pins are great because they all have a little bit of action features. Exactly. So we've got Wily's capsule here. And uh, the capsule slides up so you can mm -hmm. see Dr. Wily hiding inside. We've, we've got, got the uh, Rush, Rush has a little there. bit of spring here. Yeah. If I can get it to work successfully, there it is. The, the Rush coil has a depressible spring. It's super cool. And yep. then we have the Metul there who can hide under its little Metul helmet. Oh, it Absolutely goes down. Adorable. That, I was trying to get that to work it's, earlier. I'm like, it's why a is Matul it not work? shout. I really <laughs> should have known this. I, I love them. They are so cool. Thank you so much to Fan Gamer. Get $15 minimum donation from now until the end of Death Store. I, I'm a big fan of them because I I too have real movement action. You see, my eyebrows go up and down on command when I move them with my hands. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't win them for a $15 minimum donation, but you should get one in anyway right. because it's going to get you entered into great prizes. Like, how about for a $20 minimum donation? We have this lovely pair of plushies. We've got Snake and Otacon from Metal Gear Solid. Snake has a ration, and I mean, what good is a ration if you don't have ketchup? Magnetic. Magnetic ketchup. Magnetic ketchup. We are living what, in the future. What will they think of next, Shout? These are super cool collectible figurines. Uh, their hands are magnetic, so they can hold the ration and ketchup. They look absolutely great. $20 minimum donation. Thank you so much to Fan Gamer for sending them out Indeed. to us. Now, uh, how about Shout? Yes. From our good friend Pearl Pop. We have this absolutely beautiful Perler of what Mega Man character? That is that is base. That is base. It's not bass. Not bass. Look, we had some practice before we started. I I I know it and then I read it and then I have it wrong. So it is it is base. <laughs> Super great Perler. I believe this is a ten dollar minimum donation from now until the end of Death's Door a little bit later tonight. So cool. Thank you so much to Pearl Pop for sending that out to Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And Wolf Shadow has also contributed to some of the Mega Man awesomeness that we have here. Oh, yes, yes. So we have this pair of iron-on patches, Mega Man iron-on patches. We have an E-Tank, if you feel like you're running a little bit low. We have a Dr. Wily emblem. Uh, again, these are courtesy of our friends Wolf Shadow. Were they $5? I believe? They are, I believe, a $5 minimum donation from now until the end of Death Store. Get those donations in. Huge exactly. shout outs to Wolf Shadow, by the way, providing us awesome iron on patches for years now. Always super excited to see them. Always super excited to give them away. They're oh, so yeah. cool. They've got great detail on them. And, you know, you can just iron them onto your clothes. Just, just put them on the jacket like that. It's there. But it's not going to be there. It's going to be with whoever wins them. Exactly. Now, from Caroline Brown for a $25 minimum donation. We have this absolutely incredible Psychonauts 2 painting. Like, like, come on, shout. That's really come cool. Come on. You, you got the Psychic 6 in the background there. Maligula kind of towering over them with waves of psychic energy radiating out of her. And in the foreground, of course, you've got, you know, the main characters of the game. You've got uh, Rasputin and Lily and, um, oh, I forget the name of the psychic power that Raz is using there to make a little duplicate of himself. But super absolutely gorgeous painting $25 minimum donation thank you so much to Caroline for sending that out to us come on it's a $25 donation that's going directly to charity you could win that beautiful one-of-a-kind painting what more could you ask for shall well so all the prizes that we just talked about again these are all available uh, for the minimum donation as long as those donations come in before the end of death's door mm -hmm. but we have a few other things that are available for a little bit longer period we of do time. yeah starting with from our friend The Chain Nerd, I believe, for a $50 minimum donation, you can get entered to win this absolutely incredible uh, Sheikah Eye and Triforce Chainmail Inlay. It's the, the Sheikah Slate from Breath Sheikah of the Slate. Wild. Shout. Thank yeah. you, yes. Huge, huge shout-outs to The Chain Nerd and August of The Chain Nerd. 
this is incredible. This is like 12,000 individually hand-linked pieces of chain mail. Yeah, these are like, what, quarter-inch link, I quarter think? Quarter-inch link at most. Yeah. They are very small. They are coming together to make this beautiful image in a medium that we really don't see very much. And it is stunning. Might be a little bit hard to see on camera, but it is so shiny. It's so reflective. It's a $50 minimum donation. So you but you that. have to get those donations in today. Please make sure to get them in because this thing is so cool. And of course, Shout, we got to talk about our grand prizes a little bit, don't we? We do, and we have two of them. So, uh, first up, from Heroic Replicas. Oh, yes, yes. We have an awesome three-piece prize pack available to you uh, from featuring items from the Legend of Zelda games. We have the Master Sword available in the Dark Link Black Edition. So absolutely gorgeous there. Stylish, we have, stunning. We Big have fan. a Hylian shield. Uh, it does come with a handle and strap to help you keep a hold on it. And just arrived, we have this new in the studio. Uh, we have a Microton Hammer. Uh, so this is a $250 cumulative donation. Shout. Yeah. Shout. I, yeah. I, I don't think that's the megaton hammer that comes with the prize pack. Well, it's the, it's the microton hammer. Th th does that look like it weighs about 30 pounds? It's the microton. Yeah. It I'm, squeaks. I, I, give, give me, give but, me that. But, ah! $250 cumulative donation. All of the donations that you're sending in from now through the end of the marathon, if that total equals or exceeds $250, you are automatically entered to win this wonderful grand prize from Heroic Replicas, as well as our other grand prize. Indeed. Thank you so much to Dave at Heroic Replicas for making that happen. You get the Master Sword, you get the Hylian Shield, and you get an actual wonderfully crafted Megaton yes. Hammer fresh from Heroic Replicas. Super excited to be able to show that off a little bit later, but showing you off right now from Skytech Gaming. We have this lovely Skytech Gaming Mark IX custom gaming PC. It's got a 30 70 graphics card in it shout you still can't find those i was saying that six months ago nope. i was probably saying that about a year ago uh, you probably can that was a 3070 or 3070 ti and, i believe uh I'm, I'm not sure we'll have to check the specs but we you will. can check the specs as well by heading over to gamesdonequick.com and checking out the tracker because it's got all the information you need shout it's got information on all the upcoming speed runs in the marathon and trust me we've got great speed runs all week you don't want to miss a single one of them you can also see about some of the incentives that we have open. Oh, there are so many good ones. Uh, we are almost at that bust to move difficulty increase. I think we only need about five hundred more dollars to make that happen. Yep. So still working on that. Let's push that through, as well as, of course, all of the amazing prizes you could win, when you need to donate to win them, and how much you need to donate to do so. Shout! I think that's just about all the time we have. But as always, thank you for being here for me. And uh, absolutely, let's go back to the break screen and rock on again. Sweet. See ya. Thank you to Scent and Shout for that lovely prize segment. Some of my favorite segments, honestly. Just so many terrific prizes. Thank you to everyone who donated them. Uh, a couple quick donations here, and I see we're we're back to more evolution talk, and why not? I mean, there is that cute gold town, right? So uh, we have uh, $10 from Spiced Ice, who says, Team Leafy on here, big leafy ears. Pikachu fan donates $10 saying the Jolteon is so cute. It very much is. Yes. Yes. All right, folks, we are going to take a very quick break. We'll be right back.
Twitch. Now we're going right into that gameplay that I know you all crave. Here we go. It's Mega Man 2 by the myth, the legend, Cool Kid, the one and only Cool Kid, fight for everlasting peace and take it away. 